Hey everybody, it's another gallery walk. This is Freddie. I'm here on Elliott Street. We've got Peter Havens and everyone's books, homemade ice cream, lots of good stuff just in this little section of uh, Elliott Street. And we're going to take another look around and see what's going on around our lovely little town. Gallery walk is an opportunity to visit in person or virtually and uh, a great reminder of business being open here in Brattleboro and that there are safe ways to still shop and visit our local businesses and keep them thriving. So you can come down on a Friday evening, but you can also come down on a Tuesday morning or uh, a Thursday afternoon. And in most cases, these places have plenty of space for you to have a wander, take a look around, do some early gift buying, and, uh, and just find out what's going on in some places. Uh, one of the things I like about Gallery Walk is sort of demystifying um, places that I haven't been to or haven't been to in a long time and just see what's going on in there. There's lots of fun stuff and in a lot of cases like at uh, Twice Upon a Time or at uh, Wheelhouse Clay, just a constant sort of turnaround of new and fun things to look at and potential gift items for friends and family as the holidays approach. So uh, come on down to downtown, take a look, and in the meantime, see what we've got for you here on our virtual gallery walk. Thanks for watching. Hi everyone, I'm here at River Gallery School of Art on Main Street in Brattleboro uh, to view our next exhibit. And so I'm here happy to present artist Roxelle. Hi Roxelle, thanks for being here. Hello, hello, nice to be here. Um, my work this time around is mostly my landscapes and it's work done all in plein air, which means being out in the open, painting, dealing with the light changes and mm -hmm. all of that type of stuff. Um, most of it also has to do with community that I've found at the school because a lot of this work is done either at friends land or hanging out with people just painting around town or sometimes by myself. Mm -hmm. and, but, <clears throat> I guess we could pop in and check out this one. This is a plein air painting I did with Lauren and a couple other people. It's a view from the meadows. We're out there one summer just right. hanging out painting together. Was that right on Route 30? This was uh, the trail that you get next to the marina. Mm -hmm. uh, just oh, right yeah. out there, we're just standing there at the, I guess yep. the boat dock. Yeah, just hanging out. That's I think that the meadows is maybe the most beautiful place in Brattleboro. Especially if you're there for sunset. I've not, I've not been to sunset yet, but I've been there. It's so good. There's so many birds, there's a lot of wildlife popping up everywhere. It's mm -hmm. very nice. That's another thing about painting in plein air too, is uh, interacting with nature and basically finding a lot of detail that you just miss on your day-to-day -day walk around in the mm -hmm. woods, perhaps. Um, but what if you're painting a bird and it flies away? Well, <laughs> you take a mental image of all the birds you've seen and choose right. which one looks the best and pop it in. And there. try but, to do it justice. Yeah, there's, if it flies away. The stuff moves so fast out there, like the light changes so quickly that you just mm -hmm. have to... Uh, it's a kind of race against time in a sense. You just have to mm -hmm. fill in the details a bit. Right. Um, oh, yeah. The work is usually pretty small too because I like to get it done in like an hour or two hours. Mm -hmm. And typically by that time the light has changed so much that the scene is no longer the same. Mm -hmm. A couple of these, uh, this one is a view of Fantastica, kind of just from down the hill there. Okay. And How much time did you spend trying to get all of these greens to be exactly the color that you wanted? Well, none of these are the color I wanted. Oh. It kind of just <laughs> happened. Uh, you have to just go so quickly with the mixing and mm -hmm. being out there too, over time, it gets to where well, you can solve these problems a lot quicker and then you can say what you really feel about the landscape mm -hmm. in a much more, I guess, nuanced way than mm -hmm. fussing too much with the colors because it's so impermanent. Right, right. Oh, look at this one. I love the texture of all of the greenery. This painting is one that I did at my friend Ross's land, and he teaches here at the school as well. Oh yeah. And we rebuilt the grape arbor, and then it is just that Ross Smart. Ross Smart, yeah. It looks so beautiful that he said I just gotta paint this thing. So. <laughs> and you did. Yeah, hung out out there, painted, and a tiny bit of his pond as well. Yeah. This is also at Ross's land here. 
and that's another section of the pond with some grass and dry, mm -hmm. uh, I guess, weeds on the water there. Have you done like group painting in open air sessions? Um, this one over here, that was one group uh, mm -hmm. painting, and this right here was also a group painting, but it was a friend of mine who went over to Guilford uh -huh. and just basically checking out the hills over there and just hung out, had coffee. And this is all during the past year, so yeah. it's a good escape from just being indoors all the time. Right. Yeah, it kind of sounds like a lovely way to pass the time. Yeah, honestly. You can hang out, social distancing, mm -hmm. spread out as far as you need to. Now, these feel like they have a very different feel. They're so like a little more in town, maybe? These ones are all in town. This right here is a view from upstairs at the river gallery mm -hmm. looking down on the Whetstone Brook. Mm -hmm. And this was painted in, I think, the fall of last year. Mm -hmm. uh, with plans, of course, to go winter painting, but just never did. Right. But this right here is a view on. What's it? Western Ave coming into town? Yep. That's usually what I see when I walk my dog every day. And on the hill, it's really, I really fell in love with these houses here because they mm -hmm. just catch the light when the sun's going down, too. Beautiful. Ah, oh, we have people. <laughs> Our I first usually, people. I usually don't have people in my landscape. <laughs> this but these guys were where you were painting. They were so. there. They were there. Yeah. This is uh, in Putney. Okay. Uh, a friend was clearing, a friend of Ross's was clearing some land and I just happened to be along and I usually mm -hmm. have my sketchbook and my paints with me and I just mm -hmm. did a quick planner of that. I love the way these colors are for some reason. The bright orange? Yeah. As I, I was telling Roxelle that I'm not an artist, so my, my little tidbits that I add to the conversation are not overly technical. It's just like, oh, I really like that color. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's usually it's a beautiful what it, orange. That's usually what it is for me at least. Like something but that was the main thing that drew me into this painting, all the, the giant bright orange tractor in between all this green. Mm -hmm. And stuff like that makes it easier to paint because you have a clear distinct thing that you can focus mm -hmm. in on. Right. Now that one over there I can really get behind. That's <laughs> the beach scene right there. I yeah. decided to add that in, even though it's not a Vermont scene. Take me away, I want to go there. <laughs> that was vacation last year at LBI in New Jersey. Oh. Just hanging out at the dunes, yep. watching people down there. The red and white umbrella is very quintessential. Oh yeah, the beach, <laughs> the beach patrol people. That's where I want to be. It was great. <laughs> Super hot. Yeah. Love it, but <laughs> definitely. Okay. Something to appreciate. And Another thing about painting in plein air, a lot of these paintings kind of become a sort of a permanent journal because anytime I look at these paintings, I remember the people that I was there with or just how it feels in the, even though I may not depict it as I may have seen it out there, I still feel all the same right. things that you don't really get from a photo. Right. Like there's more immersion, you spend a lot of time looking at people, at the shapes and forms and just absorbing all of nature itself out there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, these are really beautiful. Thank you for sharing the exhibit with us. Thanks for coming by and checking it out. to be on camera. I yes. was told that you were on the, you were a little camera shy. I'm a people person. Thank and I have to say that you did great. Thank you, thank you. Very well done, very young professional. Thank you. <laughs> all right, folks, we're gonna head out to our next venue. Thanks for tuning in. Brattleboro Museum and Art Center, and I'm joined by Mara Williams, the chief curator here at the museum. Thank you, Mara, for joining us. I'm very pleased that you asked me, and I'm happy to be here. Welcome all of our audience uh, in the room and outside of the room. I'm very excited to announce that for the first time in seven months, two weeks ago, we opened seven new exhibits at the Brattleboro Museum and Art Center. The first one that I'm standing in front of the title sign right now, Figuration Never Die, is actually a new venture for the Brattleboro Museum and Art Center. We are best known for our contemporary take on art. This show is a little more art historically focused on figuration in the 1950s. This is a group of artists 
who trained in the 1940s as second generation abstract expressionists. So they studied with Hans Hoffman and they were the generation after Jackson Pollock or Jack the Dripper as some people call him. And, um, but they went back into figuration. Um, and so the, they're a very important group of artists. Every one of them is represented in their earliest parts of their career in the museum world. And they have all been very commercially successful. People love owning their paintings. However, they've been overlooked in the, what we would call the canon or the art history, the museum world. And so we are taking this art historical approach because for those of you who haven't heard, sooner or later as the museum's building plans move forward, the Union Railroad Station main sec section of the gallery is going to be de dedicated to the works of our beloved late friends and patrons, Wolf Kahn and Emily Mason. So this is a group of peers of Wolf Kahn's. And so we have uh, brought 10 artists together with an eminent art historian, Karen Wilkin, who's written many, many, many books over the years. She's an esteemed professor. And we, um, she felt best represented this era. And so we, uh, we'll just walk around so that you just get a little bit of the flavor of uh, the artist who moved back, in, moved back into figuration. Their, their artwork, I think you can look at and know that it's modernism, it's not classical work. And part of the reason you know that is the slashing kinds of brush strokes that they're using, the energy of the paint, the fact that it is it has figures in it, but it is not realistic. Um, and so you have this great energy of the action of paintings, and yet it is still grounded in the observable world. This is a group show that comprises six male artists and, and four wonderful female artists right now. We are walking through this work, um, and this is the great Lois Dolan, and, uh, who had a second home and studio in Maine, where Wolf Kahn and Emily Mason had their studio here in Vermont. And I think that you can see that these are chickens, and the liveliness of the verdant green of summer and spring and the chicken bodies and the energy of the movement is captured in the way that she's actually applied the paint. Mm -hmm. And as we go through, you will notice that the studio still life comes alive in a very different way than it came alive, um, say, in the time of Cezanne or going back further to the great Dutch still life. Then in this area, we have Grace Hardigan's work. And race has just piled up lamps and vases and vessels, and they float straight up the screen in a way that you never would have seen um, it happening really in space, even in a collectible shop. But I'd like, you know, I'd like to point out how she's quickly articulating, I mean, how fast and short and energetic these brush strokes are that define the objects, but what you really start looking at as you come up to it is how beautiful the mark making is, how much the energy of her intention, the assurity of her muscles mm -hmm. are in making this painting. I really like these strokes here. Aren't they beautiful? Yeah. And um, it's this sort of the idea of a collectible shop, uh, mm -hmm. the way it just all sort of piles up with these glass and ceramic forms. And then over here you have more tropical and banana-like forms. Plants. Yes, I'm definitely getting a tropical feel. Getting a tropical feel. <laughs> so this show continues throughout our, our main gallery. We're very excited by it. These are big, robust, beautiful paintings. But I'm not gonna to talk too long about any of the shows here. This is just to give you an overview of the excitement of things that are happening in the museum. So once we leave the main gallery, we start going off to the rooms that were um, the smaller rooms in the old Union Railroad Station. So we leave the waiting room and we go up to the ticket office next. Okay. Welcome to the great shoe spill. In 1996, out in the Pacific, a giant container ship hit a violent storm 
and containers of products that were manufactured on the Pacific Rim that were coming back to the United States went overboard, including thousands of pair of Air Jordans. And it turned out that there were some oceanographers who studied the whole phenomenon because the shoes floated. They didn't sink to the bottom. When the container cracked open, the stuff came, and they drifted, and they were able to look at the current system throughout the Pacific to find out where the shoes came up. And Andy Yoda read about that. And he's always been interested in shoes, and he's a pop artist. And so he's a pop for a new century, I call Andy Yoda. And so he started with his environmental dumpster diving to find old packaging material. He made a pattern, 17 pieces, and started gluing these shoes together. Then he started, oh, well, this is an interesting bag from this store, and he deconstructed it and put it back together again. And so started Overboard, his installation piece. And um, so it's, a, first of all, it's hilariously funny. Second, it tells us something about the commoditization of the world, or the commodity culture that we have, the consumer culture that we have, and also the environmental culture that we have, or lack thereof. Um, and so Andy, uh, who has a long, he used to live in Vermont, he has a long-standing relationship with the Brattleboro Museum. Our director, Danny Lichtenbilt, invited him to come and do the project. So now I just want you to train your camera on the row I told you. And we start with the Latches Hotel and Theater. Wow. Uh, so Andy got some movie posters from the Latches that they were going to throw out. And then he got these wonderful um, cords. So that, that idea of the latches is having um, that rich theatrical deco, right, decorative red drape kind of feeling. And then we go on to um, the Whetstone and Hermit Thrush and um, Sands Army Navy, Wook Han, Emily Mason, Landmark College. Um, Wow. Um, Ritz Crackers. Ritz Crackers. The United States Post Office. Sierra Nevada. There's so much going on that my eyes really don't even know where to settle. I, like it would take an hour to take in each shoe. Absolutely. Um, and you know, I have to love the Landmark College shoe because I love Landmark College and my nephew was a graduate of Landmark College. Um, and the staff there are very dear to me, particularly the arts faculty. Where's the Landmark College? It's right in that corner. Ah, there it is. Now, I am going to make a shameless plug. Yes, please. That all of these sneakers are actually for sale, uh, as are their display oh. shelves. And so the Landmark College already has a red dot on it, because guess who's getting a Christmas present from Auntie? <laughs> and I know that the Harris Hill Ski Jump has already been taken care of. Uh, I suspect yeah. that what kind of Emily Mason's had. I suspect one of the Sam shoes may be. The other one might be available. At any rate, they're $795, and the proceeds are split three ways. Mm -hmm. The artists, the Brattleboro Museum and Art Center, and a nonprofit in Washington, D.C. that started the project um, mm -hmm. that is um, a wonderful nonprofit in its own right. So this is... Right. Um, uh, oh, there's Andy. Big Picture Farm. Big Picture Farm, they Andy Warhol. They make fabulous caramels. I, of course, like the original <laughs> the vanilla caramel. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. Oh, look, you're in the basketball team or various sports teams. Marimeco. It's a Bruce Lee movie picture. Yeah. Wow. So how long will this exhibit be here? This one is actually up through March. This is one of our longer exhibits. Mm -hmm. And did you say that uh, the artist is coming to speak? Yes, he is. Um, and anyone can sign on to www.brattleboromuseum.org. I'll smush together lowercase to find out when all of our exciting programs are. Mm -hmm. I'd also like to say that we're open Wednesday through Sunday from um, 10 in the morning until four in the afternoon. 
we have um, very, very, very limits on who can come in at any one time. You could call and just book an appointment so that you mm -hmm. know you're here with no one. Mm -hmm. The museum is close to 5,000 square feet. Ordinarily, we can get more than 300 people in. We've topped it at 60. Mm -hmm. And we have gallery monitors who say, no more than one family in the small rooms, and then mm -hmm. please keep your distance in the larger rooms. It has not been a problem for anyone to be here and, and feel uncomfortable whatsoever. We have rigorous cleaning standards. We have hand sanitizers everywhere. And on the weekends when we tend to be a little bit busier, we even have gallery monitors floating so that mm -hmm. people know what to do. And 100% and, and, um, and mask wearing in mm -hmm. the museum. Bravo. Okay, so I'm going to take you quickly to the Parcel Express Wing and just talk about two shows together very quickly. And thanks for staying with us. Hi, everybody. Erin here. I'm here to bring you your first virtual gallery walk, Brattleship Clue. So if you don't know, Brattleship is a game you can play for the whole month of November. It involves making small purchases downtown and winning big, big prizes. So those of you who are playing have picked up a kit at either BMAC or Harmony Collective. If you haven't grabbed one yet, you still can run in there and grab your kit and start playing. So here's your first clue. We just saw a segment taped in Brattleboro Museum and Art Center. And my question for you is, what is the name of the exhibit that is all about Air Jordans? What is the name of that exhibit? On the back of your Brattleship card, there are three spaces for you to write your answers. So go ahead and write that first answer in and catch you at the next clue. I hope everybody's having fun out there in internet land, yo. Come on, we're having fun here. Whoa.
Christmas disco night. We got in a fight, so we left that place. They was playing the bass, yeah, the rubber dub. When we left that club, we got in a cab, yeah, we went back home. We was all alone. You got on the phone and you started a flirt with a dude named Kurt. You was wearing a skirt. 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 It was my disco night. We're here with Odell at Epsilon Spires, which is a, well, I should have you probably say what it is, actually. So uh, let me start over. We're, we're here at Epsilon Spires with Odell. And can you tell us a little bit about Epsilon Spires, which is sort of a new, new here on the art scene in Brattleboro? Yeah. Um, Epsilon Spires is a arts nonprofit. Um, that's goal is to... <laughs> <laughs> well, that didn't take long. <laughs> um, um, kind of um, produce inquiry and conversation in the community around art and science and the combination of the two. And we do that through performances, art shows, uh, uh, movie screenings, and also working with other local groups in the area. So, great. A lot of things. And when, and when did you, and so how long have you guys been open? Um, we opened officially last uh, fall. Okay, so September. just about a year. Yeah. Okay. Nah. Um, and this, of course, is the former Baptist church and a church that has a long history with a, uh, an organ. Is it an SD organ? I forget. Yes, it is. Good. So an SD organ built right here in Brattleboro and installed. I think it's the biggest one. Is it? Yes. Oh, wow. So there you go. The biggest organ, uh, SD organ potentially ever built right here in this, in this space and still functioning. Um, and also home to the, the two um, stained glass windows, one of which is still here, the Tiffany glass window, right? Yep. Um, okay. And we have um, a couple of interesting things here today. What, is, what are we seeing here along the floor? So along the floor are some custom upholstery pieces made by an artist named Kristen Ripley. Mm -hmm. um, the theme of this show, which combines her work and the work of Brent Birnbaum, which um, I'm sure the camera will go over later, um, is called Nature Nurture. And um, with her, it, it, it's kind of about what we're given in life and then how we can alter things or not, like what control we have within what parameters are set for us. Mm -hmm. And for her work, um, you know, she laid these pieces out here and made them and provided them for you, but the idea with them is that the viewer can move them around in any way that they want, and so that's the control for the viewer in this situation, and, all, and, and she's provided this scenario. Wow. So create your own art, create your own pathways, your own uh, configurations. Yeah. Um, and then with his work um, on the wall, these collages are made out of... Um, uh, like game boards that were disassembled uh -huh. and then he dropped the pieces from a, a high building and then um, you know collected them how they landed and put them just about that way in these collages and oh, so fine. for that one it's taken that idea of like pathways and game boards and he you know took those pathways and cut them up and that's like his control within that and dropped them off the building but he also couldn't control how they landed even right. though he was able to frame the situation 
in that way. It's a, it's a synthesis of the familiar and the random. Yeah. That's great. And is this the bell tower rope? Is that what it that? is? Yeah, okay. you can ring it if you want. Oh, really? Oh, that's exciting. You have to like go high and really. You have to, you have to go full hunchback really yeah. to make it work. <laughs> well, I kind of say, I wonder what time it is. There. It's early enough. I don't want to freak people out. <laughs> Six thirty-seven. Well, okay. It's just the right people will be like, oh, we, I gotta get home. Oh wait, no, it's six thirty-seven. You ready? Oh my god! <laughs> and then let it go, and it all. No, I didn't do it enough. Oh, there it is. Wow. <laughs> well, the bell ringer had to eat a lot of Wheaties. I think it's safe to say. Cool. All right. So we have nature nurture. And then over here, we have a fascinating uh, setup here. Yeah. Um, so this is called Station Buttercup, and it was made by a New Orleans-based artist named Quintron. Uh -huh. um, and I'll explain it first and then turn it on. Yep. It's basically um, a, a synthesizer that's got a different sound that correlates to different aspects of the weather. And outside, we have a sensor that senses like whether the wind's blowing and when, the, when it's dark or light and when the sun's going down whether it's raining or not, the temperature, and then there's a little biometric pressure um, thing there, and each one has its own sound that will build in different ways depending on the weather. So you've got wind, sky, rain, That's the wind sound. and temperature. That's the like, humidity and temperature. And then you've got some other knobs here that you can sort of change, perhaps pitch, tone, or yeah, just other the things. Different... And yeah, there's only um, four in the world of these. Only four of these. And again, sort of you know interacting with uh, existing forms, and then uh, sort of reimagining and rechanneling. Uh, information in in new ways. It's kind of a, this is a fun synthesis of of uh, technology and then what the, you know what the weather happens to be doing for the random element of our weather, and then you can also make some decisions on which controls that you're highlighting or emphasizing. That's that's really neat. And it's called a weather warlock as well. I forgot. A weather warlock. That's fun. All right. Have a lot of fun with that. Come down and mix your own Pink Floyd album here at Epsilon Spires. All right, very cool. Neat. So, if anyone's interested in seeing it, it'll be up. Um, until December 6th, so it's, yep. yeah, um, is it okay if I mention that? Oh, yes. Okay. Um, uh, also, I'm um, starting at, oh, at noon on December 4th, that's next gallery walk day, um, in a collaboration between Stone Church, Epsilon Spires and Delta Vermont will be a um, holiday pop-up shop featuring all local vendors. It'll be in person in our back room here, but the vendors won't be in person, so it'll be kind of set up so 10 people at a time can come through and like look at the crafts to keep everything kind of safe and spaced out, but it'll be a great opportunity to support lots of local craft makers and oh, vendors, great. and there'll be Christmas trees as well out back. 
I'm going to be all weekend. Terrific. All right. So a great opportunity for uh, gift gathering and supporting local artists, but in a safe way, kind of a, a craft buffet, if you will, yeah. right? <laughs> Just mix and match and, and see what you like on the tables and, and, and move on through the space and then make room for other people. All right, that sounds great. I know, of course, you guys are also know because you've been doing um, films. I know it's you know it's getting cold now, and that's that's kind of over for the season. But you were doing films out behind the building, and I assume that's probably going to be the plan for late spring and, and into the summer next year. Yeah, it'll all, all depend how things are going in the world. Yeah, I'm sure that will start up with cinema. It, it's been great to have it outside, you know. Anyway, even besides COVID. Sure. And uh, I'm sure they'll, we'll definitely have some events through the winter as well, but we're not sure what that's going to look like. Right. Yeah. Well, and you're, I'm sure your programming will continue to adjust as, as conditions dictate and, and new and interesting ideas will percolate out of that. So. Terrific. Well, thank you so much for having us. We really appreciate the, the look at, at what's going on here at Epsilon Spires, and, and we wish you the best, and we'll, we'll check in again with you later. Oh, cool. thanks for coming. All right. Thanks for watching, folks. Hi, everyone. Aaron here, and I am arriving to Hermit Thrush Brewery, where we're going to meet um, artist Caitlin, and she's going to walk us through some of her artwork. So we're going to head right into Hermit Thrush. Come with me. Hi there. Hello. Welcome. Hey there. And here we are. Hi, Caitlin. Hi, Evan. Um, thank you for coming by uh, to see my artwork. My name is Caitlin. I'm a local Brattleboro artist, and uh, I also work here at Hermit Thrush Brewery. So uh, I'm excited to show for these next two months right. because uh, November is a good month for Hermit Thrush. It's its six-year anniversary, oh, and wow. uh, it's also my birthday month. So. Oh, yay! <laughs> Happy birthday, Hermit Thrush and Caitlin. <laughs> so yeah. I see you have a whole room set up. Yeah. And uh, would you like to start in one place and then sort of walk us through some of your pieces? Um, sure, yeah. Uh, we can start just over here. Okay. And just around six prints. Um, these are my most recent pieces that I've been doing in the um, midst of the pandemic. Um, so I think they, some of them like really speak to our times, uh, specifically this one right over here. Um, yeah, uh, a lot of my work is kind of about being, like spending time by yourself, mm. um, which I think we're all doing a lot of that right. <laughs> at the moment, it feels like. Yep. And, uh, yeah, I spend a lot of time listening to music, so that's what inspires a lot of these drawings here. Um, I love these line drawings. Thank you. They look like, you know, the Arduino, it's like a Facebook page of artwork that sort of resembles this. It's really I actually, cool. I actually don't. I should look at oh, that. Yeah. Yeah. There's so much detail when you really get close and look. Yeah, I love lines. I'm like really <laughs> trying lines. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so these pieces on this wall over here um, are not, so those are digital, these are analog, and line work is still really important to me in these, mm -hmm. especially um, in this first one, I've been playing a lot with a um, paintbrush pen instead of just like a solid nib, mm -hmm. which allows for uh, line weights to vary. Um, yeah, I also think the gold paint is fun. Gold is always fun, I think. Yeah. yeah. These are so beautiful. I love your aesthetic, just Thank in you. general. It's very cohesive feeling. Yeah, that was important to me. Um, are these recent? I know you said those were so newer pieces. Those are the most recent. Um, these are actually were started in the beginning of this year. So okay. it was a very long time ago. No. Right. Um, so like January. Uh, actually, this one was 2019. 
but these are 2020. And one of my favorite pieces is this little guy over here, mm -hmm. um, which I did earlier this year. Uh, it's just like, <laughs> it's just like a moment. Yeah, if you, um, uh, yeah. yeah. I don't know, some people might get it if they know what Bonnaroo is. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. And then I have more like, Hermit Thrush specific artwork on this mm -hmm. wall and some pieces on that one too. That is um, a map. Mm -hmm. That was the original um, illustration for our 40 mile fun zone camera. Oh. Yeah. Can you tell me more about that? Yeah, so um, so we have this beer called the 40 mile fun zone mm -hmm. that's sourced from um, like all the ingredients are sourced from within 40 miles. So um, we wanted to make a map that highlighted, like that we sourced this, those ingredients from within that radius and mm -hmm. um, include like fun things to do that makes living here like very specific to this place. Mm -hmm. So you'll see a lot of like swimming holes and kites right. and stuff like that. Things so here's things. Route 30. Yeah. Here's Hermit Thrush, the meadows. Yeah. Very cool. So did this go on the can? Uh, yeah, a version of that is on the can. Oh, nice. Yeah. Hermit Thrush has the best cans. They're so pretty. Yeah, they're really <laughs> The colors, they're the illustrations. Vibrant. And now this is very different. Yeah, so um, Come that's just like a study of our outdoor environment at the cellars or other facility. Mm -hmm. um, so we have an apple tree up there and just, yeah, we're just playing around with watercolor in that mm -hmm. one. Um, yeah. Are any of your pieces for sale? Uh, yes, yeah. so um, the originals mm -hmm. will be selling as well as the prints. Um, okay. Yeah, and they can, so, people can just come to Hermit Thrush during regular hours? Yes, come to Hermit Thrush during regular hours and talk to um, whoever is working here. And what are the regular hours again? Hey! <laughs> <laughs> hey, you! I have a question. Uh, what are the hours, the regular hours that you guys are open? Great, thank you. The hours are Monday through Wednesday. 11 to 6, Thursday, 11 to 6, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, 11 to 8. Okay. okay. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't that part Oh, that's okay. That's, that's okay. Totally no, it's yeah. on the fly. Okay. Okay, so the pieces are for sale, come in during regular hours. Is the outdoor seating area staying open for a while? Uh, I believe that's the plan, the outdoor seating, and that's Thursday. Through Sunday, that's open for cold mm -hmm. can service. Mm -hmm. um, you can bring food and pets are kept from the outside, mm -hmm. um, and then to go service the rest of the week. Okay, yeah. great. Well, I think that wraps us up here. Thank you, Caitlin, for walking us through your art. It's really beautiful. Thank you very much. And yeah. uh, thanks for having us. And we're gonna head to our next stop. Dun da da da. Virtual Gallery Walk Brattleship Clue number two. We just watched a segment at Hermit Thrush Brewery with local artist Caitlin Stern. Um, so the question is, Caitlin shared with us one of her pieces which referenced a popular music festival. What is the name of the popular music festival in the piece that Caitlin shared with us? All right. Good evening, everybody. Frederick here and talking to John Dimmick, an artist uh, who's currently on exhibit here at Vermont Artisans Gallery on Main Street. And um, we're doing gallery walk again and want to have a little chat and talk about John's art. How are you, John? I'm good. Thank you. Good. Um, and you do watercolors, obviously. Yeah, I, I Oh, watercolors. Yeah, and um, a lot of local subjects. We'll talk about that in a minute. But how long have you been doing watercolors, and what sort of uh, inspired you to want to work in that medium? 
Well, I, I, I'm a retired teacher from the middle school and the, uh, the high school mm -hmm. after 37 years and a coach uh, as well. When I retired, I was looking for something to take up my energy and I, I, I tried oil painting and I tried uh, watercolors. Oil painting through Marilyn uh, Allen and uh, watercolors to the senior center with uh, Maisie Crowley got me interested in those and, and decided the watercolor probably worked best for me. Plus they store a lot easier. Mm. <laughs> nice, all right. And so this is so this is something sort of a... About, uh, about 10 years now. Okay, yeah. sort of a post-retirement sure. uh, activity. And um, it seems as though you've been pretty prolific and... Uh, yeah. Are you sort of uh, going around town and setting up an easel and you know finding a spot that you like and kind of? No, I, I do very little plein air. I'm pr primarily uh, work from photographs. Oh, okay. But, so I'll go around and uh, I a lot of hiking and stuff. Take mm -hmm. photographs and then come back and, and work those down in my studio. Okay. Or or with the group. We have a, well before this this all set in uh, six months ago. We had a there's a nice group that I get together with at the senior center and, and we'll paint uh, for a couple hours on a Wednesday and then. Uh, I'll finish what, what I do at home. But okay. I'm fairly prolific. I generally about a painting a week. Okay. Interesting. Um, so tell us a little bit about just some of your, your subjects and your your viewpoints, etc. What uh, what drew you to these images and these and uh, and the seasons that they're in, etc. Well, I went through a, a, a short phase of uh, just doing Brattleboro images, and and they they people in town have liked them quite a bit. Uh, some of them have actually done very well. Uh, I take um, I take my paintings and I actually go to a, a, a gentleman in uh, East Hampton. He does professional photography work, mm -hmm. and I take him to another guy in, in East Works down there who does prints. and And some of these paintings have done fairly well as prints, as, as well as just selling them as a painting. Uh, but I do a wide range. Uh, I, I enjoy doing the, the local stuff, but at the same time, I also really like doing some of the, you know, the landscape and the outside things as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I tend to be pretty, pretty tight originally to the photograph, but then I, I loosen up toward the end quite a bit. I literally throw paint and, uh, and that kind of stuff. And that's part of the fun, right? I mean, that, that I think is the, yeah part of the fun of, of my opinion. Being yeah, I mean, I think that you know, there's. A good reason why. I mean, you could easily buy a photograph of There's the same scene. There are some very nice photographers out there, but, I, <laughs> but, it's, but to translate the photographs into, into a, a piece of artwork is, is kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, they're lovely. I love the, the muted tones, and the, there's a lot of uh, either autumn or maybe early spring images here. I see uh, this is winter here on High Street. Um, any particular season or... Well, I like the fall, yeah. and, you know, um, and I like those colors, mm -hmm. but I, I, I guess I tend to be a little bit muted in the tones. I have a certain palette that I, I work with and yep. uh, try to stay within a, a, a smaller range of uh, colors, and, um, but I'll try anything uh, for once anyway. Sure. Oh, I see the, the street reflections here in the, the corner. Um, looks Not like a, a, a bright evening. Perhaps. Rainy evening down by the latches. Uh -huh. yeah. You get that wet on the pavement. And... Terrific. And then you've got some nature ones as well here. Yeah, the, this one here uh, with the reeds is actually Sadaga. That's the floating island. That's Sadaga Pond. I don't know if you're aware there's a floating island. I'm not aware of that. So those reeds and those trees are actually only connected to the earth by the roots with about three or four feet of water underneath them huh. uh, down below. <laughs> and uh, my wife and I took a, a canoe ride out there in the fall. Yeah. And uh, this other one over here is actually out towards uh, towards Spofford, uh, one of the ponds that comes off. And that was a picture I took during a, a bike ride. Nice. Um, a lot of detail in there. I really like that one. Thank you. Um, yeah. The lily pads and just the sort of changes in the and how wet it is and, and the reflection of the sky and everything well, really well, captured that great. And of course the, the, nice, the interesting thing about, it, about watercolor as opposed to the oils is you know it's hard to make a correction once you get started so you, you sort of have to have it planned out and uh, you, certain techniques you, you, you learn to represent a shape that, um, that uh, you have to make it work and uh, I've found some success doing that so yeah. watercolor has kind of worked out pretty well for me.
Nice. Great. Um, and then, do you work in larger sizes sometimes, or is this kind no, of... Actually, this is about as big as I get. Yeah. In fact, okay. I, what, what, I, I've discovered, you know, as I said, that when we were talking previously, that watercolor store pretty well as opposed to oils. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, I've tried to stay pretty standard because I make my own frames. Oh, okay. And uh, I, so I'll have, I have, I probably got 20, 30 frames at home, and, you know, when I go... Different shows, I can I can switch paintings in and out easily that way. Uh -huh. uh, I, I mat them myself. Pretty much, a, it's a pretty good hobby from that standpoint. That's uh, nice. Part of what I taught in school is woodworking, so that came oh, okay. came along. But uh, and is this maple or what? That's type? actually poplar. Oh, it uh, is. Okay. This simple off the rack poplar and um, this blind on the corners uh, to give it a little more. But I, I find I like the simple frames for the watercolor. I think the I think especially in a display like this where you've you've got uh, a dozen or more paintings up the the, the simplicity of the frame and the the, the, the same frame mm. makes the show I think show a little better too mm -hmm. it's, and, I, and I think the light color I like because it makes the watercolor kind of shine out yeah it's nice yeah. and I think uh, you know I could see people feeling like they're taking a little piece of Vermont with them uh, not only from oh, the well, image that's, that's New also. Hampshire over there oh what you need to oh okay <laughs> <laughs> He's giving you the cut sign. <laughs> That's cut I just go and go. All right. Uh, okay. Um, well, I want to thank you so much well, for thank, showing us. Well, thanks for coming in. Your work. Thing, you know, and, and it's, it's really it's, beautiful. It's, it's, certainly, uh, we hope we get back to where people feel a little more comfortable getting out and out on the town. And, Indeed. Uh, and, uh, and just a reminder, Vermont Artisan Designs is open every day of the week. I think eight to four right now. Um, and it's a large space, so um, it's definitely a place that you can come in and take a look. And, um, you know, I'm sure they're limiting numbers upstairs if that needs to happen, although I imagine probably um, it's pretty spread out. So you can come and uh, check out Vermont Artisans here on Main Street uh, at your leisure or on Gallery Walk Evening if you're so inclined. We'll be going to a new venue in just a minute. Stay tuned. We're the fantastic partners of Southern Vermont. Ready? 
Here we are again. I'm back with the third and final clue for the virtual gallery walk brattle ship component of your game. Have you been getting the clues? I hope so. Um, clue number three. We just watched some music. Wasn't it great? By a local band. What was that band's name? Again, the music clip we just watched. What was the name of that band? All right, folks, that wraps up our virtual gallery walk clues. If you're not playing Brattleship yet, you really, really should. There's no reason not to if you shop and eat downtown in Brattleboro. Thanks, everyone. Hi, everyone. Aaron Skaggs here again, and I'm joined now by a second Aaron. Aaron Miley O'Keefe. <laughs> And Aaron's here to talk with me about the handy stations that are going in all around downtown Brattleboro. So I'm gonna hand it over to her to talk about a handy station. And what is a handy station? Sounds handy. Right on, yep. Hand sanitizing. So it's where public health meets artistry meets vibrancy in our downtowns. And uh, it's supported by a couple of great organizations including the town of Brattleboro and Thompson Trust and the Arts Council of Wyndham County. So these um, came about in my efforts to make lemonade in the middle of COVID and uh, feature some of my friends and new friends um, that are artists locally that have also had um, a diminishment of their income and their work uh, to feature their work in, in trying to also make hand sanitizing, engaging, and fun. So what you're seeing now in process is the last week of assembling a number of different aspects of this project. There's visual art, there's sound art, music, there's technology that I'm working on with my friend Bob Parks to have a touchless sanitizing dispenser that also triggers the music. The music is original music by local artists, 20 seconds CDC recommendation of how long to also sanitize your hand. So some of the artists, the visual artists um, that have been working on this project, we have uh, Juniper Creative Arts here. Um, this is for the library. The audio for that is gonna be part of a, uh, a reading list for BIPOC Family Healing. Um, and that, this is featuring Susu 
community farm and Amber Arnold has been curating books for BIPOC families mm -hmm. and healing and then those excerpts they, she and two of her partners in that endeavor are going to read excerpts from the books and oh, those wow. are going to be the audio on this. This is going to be really Amazing. cool for the library. Over here we have the one that's voted very timely and hopefully we'll get out on the street today. This is with Ezra Distler and these are that. images of all of a bunch of uh, citizens of Brattleboro, which is really cool. This is going to be for Insight Photography, and the music is going to be by Kata Trizais. Oh, yeah. Um, this one over here is going to go out in front of everyone's books. This is featuring Out in the Open and their, their good work. It's amplifying their good work. The artist is Shay Witzberger. Oh. And she also did the audio, which is it's beautiful. You gotta come and check that out. Is the audio music or spoken? It's music and it also has um, the sounds of protests oh. in the background. It's just really beautiful weaving of sound. Yeah. So I like the fact that people have taken it beyond just mm -hmm. a jingle. Mm -hmm. um, over here we have King Cars. This is going to be featured out in front of Boys and Girls Club. So I encourage him to work with a youth. He ended up working with his son, Rowan, on this. Mm -hmm. And uh, the music on that will be by Molly Steinmark. Oh, wonderful. So, and then we get a couple more ones at Hermit Thrush. That's Colin Leach is doing the artwork. Mm -hmm. Lisa Schneckenberg is doing the music. Mm -hmm. And then we also have another one going out in front of uh, Boomerang oh, with um, Jonas Fricke and, nice. um, and Zara Bode. Oh, wonderful. So, those are the ones you'll see. We're also upgrading the one at the void. Mm -hmm. So that's. And when will the rest of these hit the streets? This week. This week. This week. This week is the week. This okay. is the week. Come out on Friday. We're going to try and get as many of the artists out there to be by their stations. You can ask them questions about their work, their process. Mm -hmm. You can ask the um, amplified organizations about mm -hmm. their work in our community. Mm -hmm. Is it all day or in the evening? Oh, we're going to start at five. Nice. Yes. Wow. About, about five to six based on, you know, it'd be getting dark now. Right. So, right. and you can see there's more, there are more flat top stations that have cut already. So um, we're hoping to get another fleet of them out in the streets it's in the next couple months. It's beautiful how this has woven so many different facets with sort of transcending hand washing. It's now uh, feeding and supporting our artists and our local citizens and I applaud you for this important great work. Thank you. Thank um, you. It's been an honor. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank yeah. you for being with us, Erin. Thank you, Erin. And we're gonna head out to the next stop. Okay. <laughs> See you soon. So we're back here at Wheelhouse Clayworks, and we're talking uh, with Tita again about what goes on here. You're still doing a mixture of uh, classes potentially for newbies or people who want to learn more about this process as well as yep. more experienced people who rent space here and um, use your facilities and yep and uh, they work completely independently except for loading and firing the kilns uh -huh. which the sherry the other co-owner and i do exclusively so all right so i was thinking today i would show you some of the work that we sell in the showroom because that's this other little thing that we do and holiday season's coming up so let's show people what they could expect to find if they come here shopping. Let's do it. All right. Oh, look at these. So yeah. first of all, I want to introduce you to the work of Sherry Zabriskie. She's my business partner. And she is very well known for this birch bark finish work that she does. And that is clay. I don't know if you can tell on your screen, but as much as it looks like realistic birch bark, even to having sort of the peeling effect, um, that is all uh, engineered and devised, uh, pre-firing presumably, and then painted to look like birch bark. It looks great. Yeah, I'm so glad you mentioned that it's actually clay because uh, you're right, on camera, it, it is so authentic looking. Yeah. Yeah, it's fascinating. That's a, it's, a, it, it's a distinctive uh, medium and a way to do that. And Sherry has made just all kinds of things. You know, you, you can buy a full dinnerware set. 
She's also got, you know, jars and utensil holders and vases mm. and serving pieces. So all kinds of things that you can buy if you love that birch finish. Wonderful. But let's go to the next cabinet here mm -hmm. um, because Sherry makes other kind of work as well. She also has this octopus theme that she does. Fun. That's and great. suction cups, yep, tentacles. Little, little tentacles. And octo, I don't know what the plural of octopus is. Octopuses are Octopi, amazing. Yeah. They are so intelligent. Yes. So there's a, you know, there's a whole fan club around octop octopi. octopi yeah. Yep. So as you come down, Sherry, this is more of Sherry's work. She, you know, potters have to play around and explore and try new things. Mm. So this is slab work that Sherry has done with lots of texturing in it. And then as you come down, this is work with slip that she's doing and faceting. They're fun too. And there's even more work of hers on the other side that I'll show you. Huh. Some of the things she does to just, you know, try something sure. new. Sure. This is such a fun look. I mean, this almost reminds me of sort of like finding Roman ruins or something where there's yeah. sort of parts of tiles and things, you know, sort of archaeological yep. feel to it. But yeah, it's fascinating, yep. all these and different it's, textures It's also and perfectly functional. You can use that for food. Yeah. So let's move next to this cabinet. This is the work of one of our renters who's been here for a long time, um, since just about the beginning, mm. back in um, spring of 2019. And this is Brooks's Healy, Brooks Healy's work, and he makes lots of sculptural things. He makes other things as well, but what we're featuring in our showroom is his sculptural work. Interesting. And look at the cute little horns on these sheep. <laughs> or, wait, not sheep, deer. Some owls. owls. And an almost cutest, elf looking puppy there. Yes, and the <laughs> cutest little birds you can mm. imagine. Look at the little blue eggs in this little nest here. Are fun. Just look at that. How cute is that? Lovely. Okay. So as we move to the next cabinet, this is the work of Emily Bourne. So Emily, we're very proud that she is a member of Wheelhouse. She grew up in this area. In huh? fact, her parents owned a bike shop, Specialized Sports, which uh, used to be up above Brattleboro Clayworks. Oh, okay. And so I knew Emily way back from then. And she went off to college and got her degree in ceramics and moved back to Brattleboro area. And here she is making beautiful pots here um, with a very, very interesting technique. Yeah, distinctive. Where she actually is using bubbles and hair to create the oh, effect that you see. Okay. And I'm not going to try to even go beyond that in explaining it. Huh. Well, it has, an, yeah, it has an interesting look almost of, uh, it reminds me of like when a, uh, an octopus sends out its ink, you know, when it needs to escape and there's these sort of swirls of yeah. ink in the water. Yeah, I get that. And the black underglaze that she's using is very inky. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. So more octopus reference here. So great. So when we move to the next cabinet, oh, this is the work of Tita Hillsden. Oh, what do you know? right. <laughs> so anyway, this is my work, and my focus, um, as I've gotten older and tend to want to simplify and focus down a little bit, mm -hmm. my focus has been making dinnerware. So what you see in some of these places is lots of variation on dinnerware theme, different shapes and mm -hmm. sizes of bowls. Um, different shapes and sizes of plates. Mm -hmm. And we have probably about 20, 20 to 24 glazes here. So one of the things I love to do is to design with the customer what their dinnerware is going to be, oh, what clay great. I'm going to use, what glazes I'm going to use, what mm -hmm. specific shapes mm -hmm. that they like that you know, really enhance their table. Very customized. 
and personalized. That's wonderful. Yes. Well, very beautiful. And yeah, and these have very clean lines and are um, attractive, but uh, you know, less less busy than maybe some of the other options that are available out there. Yeah, and yeah. we all that's you know we all different people have different styles. Definitely. Because we're the human race is such such a bunch of individuals. That's right. Anyone who's ever been to empty bowls, right, probably has that dilemma of like, do I go for the simple? Do I go for the large? Do I go for yeah. grandiosity or, yes. or understatement? And uh, that's part of the fun of that process. So this is some more of my work, and this is just a random selection of other things. Mm. And again, because we potters have to play around, we can't make the same thing all the time. Nice. And some people prefer to get something that's more like a one-of-a-kind. Right. For those one-of-a-kind people that we all know, right? That and that's right. Defy description and go find something interesting to do with it. So one more. There's more pots over here, but there's only one more person represented over here. So it's this shelf that uh -huh. I want to point out to you. There's more of Sherry's and my pots here. Mm -hmm. But Carol Ross sells, sells her work here. And she has a very distinctive style, um, very streamlined, and uh, a lot of her work has uh, you know, delicate little attachments on it. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I really like the look of these. And then down here you're seeing more of Sherry's playful work. Skulls perfect for Halloween. Yep. Just finished. I think I see some dragonflies. Yep. Lovely. So let's go back, Freddie. I want to show you. You were here yep. last month, and we were sitting right over here. We were standing right over here. Mm -hmm. And the last thing that you saw when you left was Steve West sitting at this wheel making this bowl, which is now glazed and fired. Oh, fantastic. So even someone like Steve, who is a rank beginner. Who knew? He had it in him. Could make, <laughs> I mean, it's not, it's not the most um, symmetrical bowl, but this is often the kind of thing that a beginner will make. And yeah. then you just keep getting better and better from here. A lot of character in that. That's beautiful. And, and really nice choices for um, the color scheme. Yeah, okay. I really like that. That's for you, Steve. All right. We'll, Thank we'll you. get that to you. So one more thing I want to do is introduce you to another one of our renters here who has lots of work. Hi. Well, Nova is kind of one of these renters. Mm-hmm. So this is Nova. She is Hello, our Nova. wheelhouse dog. Hello. I won't pet you, but I will say hi to you. And she didn't bark at you, so you know, you should feel particularly oh. welcome oh, because she didn't bark. Thank you, Nova. So come on back here. This is Marcy Freeman. Hi. Hi, Marcy. And this is Marcy's workspace. And behind you, Freddie, is lots and lots of different work that Marcy makes and sells here. Beautiful. And here's Marcy making another pot right in process. And just right. to give you a little taste of what it starts out as since you've just been looking at how mm -hmm. it finishes. Marcy, you must just love this sort of process. It's sort of, uh, to me anyway, it seems sort of meditative. It's, and That's the word. <laughs> this place is a refuge and this process is very meditative. And I can imagine sort of almost reaching a trance-like state as you just sort of watch the, the slow transformation happen. And well, it's, it's sort of, you go away. And yep. It's so fluid, and uh, it's different every single time, no matter what you're planning. Mm -hmm. and it's really lovely. All right. And when you're at this stage, do you already have a color scheme in mind, or do you sort of let the the shape and the moment kind of help define that for you, and you you right kind of now, wait a little longer? I'm thinking more about shape than I am how I'm going to decorate it. Yep. But you know, once you've got the shape. Unless you're making something in advance that you know what you're doing, mm -hmm. I sort of let the shape dictate how I want how I want it to look. But right now, it's really about presumably you go into this with some kind of shape in mind. Mm -hmm. It's like you don't take a trip without a map. 
although sometimes that's interesting too. Sure. Um, and but sometimes it has a mind of its own and it's telling you I'm really not interested in stretching that way. I'm not interested in another shape. Mm -hmm. And I see sometimes you, you well, this is still quite thick. I see some other things that look like they're much sort of thinner, more delicate. Well, I'm still raising it up yep. in order to have the strength to ask it to be elastic and stretch. I need a little bit more clay. Mm -hmm. And then at the later stage, you can trim excess off, although you're really trying not to waste clay. You're trying to. But if I were to ask this to bulge out like those pots, I, it's going to thin out as it goes out. So, And keeping the rim thick is just sort of a nice way of keeping in control. Mm -hmm. Um, even though it looks like it's going around and around in my fingers, it's not really. It's really flying out the center of the force. Mm -hmm. So it, it's taking a lot of pressure. But I'm also not thinking very hard. Right. I've just got my hands in it and I'm enjoying sure. it. Sure. Well, it's, actually, it's working with you. You're working together to create the, the new shape. Well, if you come back next month, we can show you that pot finished and it will probably be a big surprise. All right. Yeah, take a look now, and then we'll, uh, we'll see how it turns out next time. Thank you for your interest. Yeah. And you can see Marcy's got some more complex patterns, but very kind of, I think, earthy and... Um, uh, what, uh, what are those? Earth tones, I guess is what I'm... Uh, as well as some very sort of clean and basic color schemes as well. It's uh, very sort of organic and homey, homey feeling to me anyway. And then sometimes you have to get creative. This is a drumstick. Ah. Yeah, it's a drumstick, but it works to get the water out of the bottom of a pot. Ah, all right. You know, something I've never asked or even thought about that much, but where, how, where do you get clay of this consistency and quality? I'm assuming, I mean, we've all sort of dug and found sort of clay deposits, but they're not nearly as right. pure as this. So how does, yeah. how does that come to be? Well, the nice thing for the contemporary potter is that you can buy clay of all different formulas from a clay house. Okay. Um, and it can be made for throwing or made for throwing large scale uh -huh. or for throwing delicate thin things or for sculptural things. Okay. So we buy from Sheffield Pottery, which is in Sheffield, Massachusetts. Okay. We buy all our clays from them and we stock here seven different kinds of clay. Oh, okay. Interesting. So the right clay for the right job. The right clay for the right job. That's, that's about it. All right. Terrific. Well, it's so nice to have you here always. Nice to visit again and just sort of see the progress. And, um, you know, this is a very warm and welcoming space. And uh, I can see why people would really enjoy, you know, look forward to leaving their homes and, and coming over here and, and doing this sort of meditative work and, and, and such a welcoming atmosphere. So Thanks. If that's, you, that's what we're after. If you're so inclined, this is a great place to uh, come and get your hands dirty and, and learn a new skill. And uh, you never know where that might lead. So come take a look. And what are what are your hours currently and your days is that you're open? 12 to 6 every day of the week. Okay, 12 to 6. All right, hope to see you over here. And we're going to head out to another venue. Stay tuned. We are here at Twice Upon a Time talking to Nicole. Hi, owner, guys. Owner and manager. Yeah. And uh, have you had a, a busy October and early November? I've had a very busy October. It's been really great. It's been really, really great after... Um, a hard reopening in the end of May until, um, you know, all the way through June and July and yeah. August. O September and October have been wonderful, so we're really grateful. Good. We're really trying to save this shop, so everything, every day. Just good. And a, a good mix of sort of locals and out-of-towners? Yeah, we have, a, we have the most amazing community here. Just the locals are just awesome, yeah. and they're just so supportive, and I just can't be grateful enough. Good. Well, I think there's a lot of us who just sort of stop in on a semi-regular basis because you know every month there's going to be hundreds of new items to take a look at. So if you've been sort of thinking, you know, I need an end table or I need a lamp or I need some odd piece of art that I could put up 
over my mantle or whatever, this is really the, the place to come and check out because there's, you know, there's just so many options. There really is a lot. I mean, we have everything from sets of china and silverware to salt and pepper shakers to earrings and gold engagement rings and antique furniture. So it's just a little bit of everything. Yeah. Let's have a wander and just uh, see what catches our eye. Every booth has somewhere between six and nine dealers in it. Every four foot space is a different vendor. So you get different personalities all throughout. Plus yeah. there's consignment mixed in. So there's a Vermont license plate from 1938. Some Down wooden here. shoes like Dutch wooden shoes. My, my grandmother had a pair of those. Yeah. Some old Playboys, a bird cage. This amazing table. Oh, wow. What's the story with that? I know you get a lot of sort of repurposed items and this custom guy is built. A, this guy is a woodworker and he custom makes things from other things and pieces and parts of other things. So this is um, using recycled materials. There's a large pine top that was a store counter at one time. And then heavy ash legs from a southern Vermont sawmill rig. And then a redwood skirt board and uh, cast iron bin poles huh. and so yeah he made this table himself out of all the scraps of things that weren't solid pieces of furniture anymore and he made it into an amazing wonderful work of art so you know if you're uh, planning a thanksgiving for 12 this this could be the table for you this is a, a beautiful and sturdy piece of uh, furniture that would last a, a lifetime and beyond it sure would yeah Cowhide, I think. All right. Lots of clothes back here, cabinets. Every time I see a wardrobe, I want to buy one because I don't have enough clothes. Lots of space. sets of china and dishware for Thanksgiving and Christmas, and pretty soon we're going to have those Christmas decorations in too. All right. So. Old magazines. All you got to do yeah. is mask up and be ready to wander. And uh, tell us, what are your current hours and days that you're open? We're open every day but Tuesday, 11 to 6. Okay. And um, on Gallery Walk, we'll be open till 7. Okay. So you can come down. So the first Friday of every month, okay. we're going to be open till 7. First Friday. And, you know, this is a big space. It's a, There's a lot of elbow room, so it's a, a, a big space to, where you can safely... Uh, wander the aisles. You can and, definitely uh, keep your distance. Yep, yeah. Yep. Yep. There's lots of space. There's a downstairs too, and there's a recently renovated upstairs as well. Oh, all right. Well, we'll take a look. Oh, comics. Lots of comics in pristine condition. It's fun. He's got some military garb in there and some vintage t shirts too. He's a great dealer. Oh, and some record albums. They're also in good shape. We have some great records. We have them um, in three or four places on the main floor, and then we've got a couple places downstairs where we have a bunch of records, all oh. different kinds of vinyl. All right, I'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> Hats for every occasion, folks. Yeah. Yeah. But just to keep warm in the winter, there's fedoras and cowboy hats and faux fur caps for women and mink hats and just everything anything huh. it's a cap from salzburg it is yeah <laughs> <laughs> yep beer steins there's more records there too it's probably oh, all right a thousand records in there some fun jackets and we have artwork all throughout too there's a huge section downstairs but it's all over the place here on the main floor too every booth is someone different so you'll see a mixture landscape art and Indonesian art fabric art oil on canvas art Some statues back there yeah and he just did this uh, new booth here with electronics like uh -huh. receivers and record players and I see a CB radio and CD player and oh yeah, all sorts of good stuff. And some more vinyl in there. Yep. Mm -hmm. All 
All right. DVDs. Coins. All right. You want to go upstairs or downstairs? Whichever you'd like. The upstairs looks great. Okay, yeah, let's do that. I think we're gonna, if we come back, I think we're gonna try and get Alfred to do some kind of, that was the original idea. Is that maybe this could do is a, a, uh, um, a cowboy brothel sits bath, in case you ever wondered what one of those looked like. <laughs> Cowboy brothel. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's where the cowboys would dip themselves before or after. <laughs> <laughs> she redid the floors up here and she repainted. She's redoing the dressing room still. They're not done. But um, she reopened it with some amazing vintage clothes and designer clothes and oh, fun. odds and ends. Yeah, this looks great. Cool. Yeah, this feels a little roomier than before. I, it feels, I think there was quite a bit of stuff up here at one point. She's going to fill it up some more, but she's definitely going to make it so that people can be comfortable up here and social distance. And, yeah. Yeah. Good. Well, mission accomplished. It looks like uh, got plenty of room between racks. And, Absolutely. Uh, you can come and check out all this interesting vintage clothing. Absolutely. All right. These are the original railings and banister from 1906. Oh. Do you know the history of this space? Do you know what was here, what it was built Originally, for? Originally, the building was built in 1906. It was a department store called E.J. Fenton and Son. Oh, okay. And this is what it looked like, basically. The counter was wrapped around the center two pillars. Okay. And the stairwell was hidden into a basement for storage. Oh, okay. But, um... Yeah, it was. And then in 1918, it switched to Goodnow, Pearson, and Hunt, and they closed in 58. And after 1958, it was uh, split in half. Okay. And there were two stores here. Okay. And the upstairs was closed, and the downstairs was closed. Huh. So, um, yeah. So when we renovated in 1996 with Pamela Sosmo, who was the owner of the building at the time, we found that stairwell that went up because we didn't even know it existed at the time wow and um underneath the stairwell was this book that had an original cover from ej fenton and son huh. have. well that's great cash store brattleboro always reliable five and ten store in the basement trunk and big department that's great yeah huh when we moved in in 92, it was two stores. And then in 94, we moved into this half. And in 96, we renovated. Okay. We tore down the drop ceiling and redid the capitals and the tin and opened up the basement by turning the stairwell around. So you go the other way. Okay. That's why there's a landing with two stairwells at the bottom versus oh. just a straight shot. Oh, okay. Because they had to turn it around to make it public with enough room Interesting. to do that. Yeah. Well, let's take a look down there. Do we have a minute? Sure. Okay. Oh, there's more books, I think, than there used to be. There's oh. a whole book dealer. He, he has a place in Wilmington, and he closed his store because of COVID. Uh. And he doubled his space here. So now he has a whole bunch of books here. All right. I see Archer Mayer right here. Oh, yeah. There's a whole stack of them. He's one of my consigners too. Oh, His is family he? consigned with us, yeah. Ah, he's that guy does everything. He's a nice guy. Met him <laughs> and his wife and consigned a few things they had in their barn. All right. But yeah, as you can see, there's everything from dining room tables and dressers and beds to cupboards to books to There's an A and W root beer mug. I had one of these <laughs> yeah. when I was a kid. Yeah. This is really nice and 
nostalgic. Yeah. Yeah, lots See, a of lot fun of memories. Things, a lot of things your parents had, your grandparents had. Yeah. We like to, well, my favorite part of the business is that you, you're giving things that previously were trash another life, like another. Well, that's right. And, 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 re, and then uniting it with somebody who has the, those sort of feelings or finds the value in it. And, you know, I mean, that's the. the somebody how, who really loves it. How yeah. the world works today is that they're, you know, just matching people up with the right thing, right? Because one person's trash is another person's treasure. And, uh. That's right. There That's are a sort lot of the of treasures to be found here. That's sort of the uh, keystone of this whole business. One person's trash is another person's treasure. It's a dental chair from it maybe is. the early same guy that brought in the sits bath, brought in the dental chair. Oh, okay. <laughs> he brings in some really fun stuff. <laughs> Who knows what they got up to? <laughs> well, I, he just sold today a um, a. God, I can't remember the name, but it was a kind of oryx. It was a skull with these huge, sharp, straight horns. Uh -huh. And um, and then a thing that you used to use to explode dynamite, like uh -huh. the push box or whatever oh, yeah, that's called. Oh, yeah, yeah, the plunger. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he just sold those two today for like $400. So. Wow, fascinating. <laughs> you never know what you're going to find around here, really. <laughs> There's some okay. toys on the front wall too, doll furniture and yeah. dolls and wow. toy cars. Lovely carpets and artwork and Oh yeah. Oh, and here's like the the early nineteen seventies all encapsulated right here on this table. <laughs> yeah. You got your glasses for tang and your fondue pot. That's right. All right. You're all set for your 1960s dinner party. Mm -hmm. Animal top table and everything. Put some tiki music on. Seems like the only thing I buy new these days is clothing. <laughs> I have a hard time finding plus size clothing for vintage, but other than that, I don't think I buy anything else new. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you just see everything sort of come in and... When you see how much excess there is in this world, you yeah. Oh, look at all the dollhouse furniture! Now I've never noticed. I've never seen this before. A wood stove, which is like cast a cast iron cast iron wood stove for a dollhouse, and it's like totally realistic. Isn't that wild? Yeah. It's great. All right. What that was used for. <laughs> With that slot, you wonder. Well, maybe teaching it actually has a strap, or maybe for a play or something like that, or I don't mm. know. Teaching kids, I don't know. It does look something like that. Like it was a display with a strap here. Yeah. Yeah, this is all artwork. I just sold this table, so there's a big hole here, but I have. I have more stuff coming in tomorrow, picking stuff up on my day closed. So that's why we close on Tuesdays, so we can have mask-free time to move furniture. And it's hard to do that with a mask on. Sure. So I work with my cousin who is in my bubble, you know, in my circle of people, mm -hmm. and my sister. And we do the windows and rearrange the furniture and when we're closed so that people aren't here well, feeling yeah, uncomfortable. I'm sure that keeps you really busy. I mean, it's just tanker that's a bar it's a well somebody said it was a a humidor oh, but really? i thought it was a bar you slide this forward oh look at that it's clever yeah back in the the 30s version of Mad Men, maybe, you know. <laughs> yeah. Come on in, Bill. We'll have a four martini lunch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come anyway and have a four martini lunch. <laughs> Don't go back to the 1950s. Bring me a couple martinis. <laughs> Terrific. Well, lots to see here, folks. Come take a look at your convenience. Open every day, but 
Tuesday. Bud Tuesday. All right. Well, thanks for showing us around. We really appreciate it. It's great to sort of uh, no problem. soak up the history of, of this space as well as all the fun stuff that you have here for sale. Yeah, it's a real family passion. My sister works with me and my mother started this whole thing and just keeping it alive. My kids came to work with me, both of them, my and my nephew too, so three of them from the time they were eight weeks old until 12, 15 months. Oh, wow full time with us so that's yeah. great that's that's such a special experience to have a family business that you sort of grow up with and, and can be a part of and it obviously the, the many the many skills families. that you sort of pick up from that uh probably gives you a head start in life and college and all that sort of stuff so. yep and now my daughter works with me it's my son too so yeah nice we're all in this together right yeah we'll come down and take a look downtown is open and uh they'd love to see you here at twice upon a time Thank you so much. Well, that's all for Virtual Gallery Walk this month, folks. We hope you'll join us next month on the first Friday, again on both Facebook and BCTV. We'll tour new venues, restaurants, shops, and check out new exhibits. Um, I'd also love to remind you to head down to Harmony Collective or Brattleboro Museum and Art Center to grab your Brattleship kit so you can get in on these really good prizes. Um, start your Christmas shopping early or do it just for kicks. The choice is yours, but get downtown and grab one of those games so you don't miss out. Um, big huge thanks to our sponsors, the Richards Group, People's United Bank, River Valley Credit Union, and Brattleboro Savings and Loan. We wouldn't be able to create this programming without them, so thank you. And thanks to all of you for tuning in. Join us next month.